boy, this is the card system, and it's complete. It is done, done, um, much more done than the rest of this place. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But that's going to happen. That's going to happen. This has been one of the, the super technical things that I've been trying to work out for months, and it's... It's done its thing, and at the moment, the light is showing that it's in progress. So, as you saw, uh, you choose your number of players, uh, and then you hit deal. Uh, the lights will go, or you can only hit deal. I'll explain this in just a second. You only hit deal when uh, the light's are ready, and then it stays in dealing state. There's a lot it's going to do when it's dealing, because it's actually shuffling and dealing, but um, that's okay. We can go through that again at some point. And then, of course, once all the cards have cards have been finished, uh, being dealt into these barrels, the in-progress light goes on. And that will now stay on until all the cards are returned in the return spot at the end of the game. So two players, 18 cards. You should see nine in each of these, which is just... Oh, that makes me happy, 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 happy. That makes me happy. Uh, there should also be... Um, Editing Richard hasn't done his work yet, so he's not quite sure how he's going to show you... Oh. Good. Glad to see they put the ventilation in that I asked for. Uh, and here, of course, would have been the uh, solution for that round. Uh, Colonel Mustard in the dining room with Zarench. Uh, that is the solution spot. And then over here is the very well-labeled card return. Uh, and, and, and that's it. So once the cards all go through the sorting system, we should see that this reverts back to the ready state right about now. Funk, soul, brother. Let me really quickly show you what we've done around the back here. And believe it or not, I have... Label things. Uh, we've been through what this does. No, oh, I don't think we have. Uh, this system here will get the cards once they've... Oh, hang on. Let's go downstairs. Whee! Oh, oh, whoa. Perfect. Well done, Wings. That was excellent. Uh, so this monstrosity that you are aware of... Um, let me eat. <laughs> Stupid bats! Look how many there are! So, yeah, so, uh, uh, the things. We've got two outputs from this thing, remember? That is the solution that gets taken upstairs and delivered into the... Hmm. Into the solution box next to the kitchen, which is where I can see all the uh, quartz. This one it does a little bit of bendy bendy. Uh, comes up a chimney, and these are the 18... Uh, playing. I can do this. Perfect. Yep. Ah, oh, guess what? Yeah. That's why my wings didn't work. I took them off for the video. Richard, you... <laughs> yep. Oh, I did that. I did it. Oh. Ah. <sighs> Hello, I play Minecraft. <laughs> okay. So ignore all this. We'll come back to this. So the cards arrive up here. They hit this system. Uh, there is a detector here. Signal active while cards are arriving. So this reads an output as the cards flow through and it hits this falling edge uh, detector. Uh, so once that stops, this will drop. <laughs> Stop dropping. What? Something. Uh, the, the, the signal will... Uh, this will trigger an output here. All right. And that will start this running. And this will run for as long as the 37 blocks take to move across and back in this system. Uh, that is the perfect amount of time for this minecart to run nine times. Remember, if we've only got two players, uh, nine cards will get distributed to these first two Fewer players, look, you know what? I could be smart when there's only, when there's six players, there'll only be three cards each. This doesn't have to run nine times. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I don't want to spend my time on that. But yeah, time to run the minecart nine times and then, yep, card distributor. Now, listen, next exciting thing is there is a signal that comes up from downstairs that comes up when all the cards have been successfully returned. 
And we get this like single tick thing that, that boops this one way or the other. One way or the other. Uh, it's going to turn on. The rest of the lamp is going to get you. It's a one way. Oh, no. Uh, this will fire when dealing starts and when all cards return. Okay, so when all cards returned, that will go back into that state. Now, here, as so when you push this button, uh, this will uh, trigger uh, this. It's, now, this is a rising edge, but it's kind of falling edge. But anyway, this will trigger a signal as soon as that lamp goes off because this piston will fall. That will bounce around in here, pull this back immediately, which turns off the ready light. Uh, it also comes out and goes into here, which is the dealing light. And now when this is back here, as soon as that comes back, this is powered and it stops this from being affected by the button again. So I know this is really complicated, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking the signal when the button is pressed, a single pulse because buttons give you two pulses. Thanks, Minecraft. Uh, and that triggers a couple of things. So we send the signal across to this up and over to this, and actually, out the back here, it goes downstairs to start the dealing, and that is the... <sighs> Hold on. Oh, that's better. I'm ju I've just realised how much I've been prattling on about this, but I hope I hope you it, it appreciate this. Um, there are some holes that go through here, down... Not through that bit. Uh, through... <laughs> Here, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this goes all the way downstairs. This is in between the kitchen, the bathroom, and the ballroom. And that actually goes all the way downstairs. So we get uh, we get this signal. Um, come up when it's done. Go down when we're starting. Uh, right. Once uh, when the dealing stops. Right. So we actually get another falling edge here. This is taking a signal out. Uh, when the dealing starts and when it stops. And we get this falling edge here that runs this way and uh, pulls back the lamp for the dealing active. And then the final lamp is a combination of these two. I think this is an AND gate, my, my, my feeling is. So essentially the game is live when we're not dealing or in a ready state. So if either one of these redstone blocks is across, it will power this, uh, which will... Uh, it d does this lovely little inversion thing and turns that off. Now, when one of these, when both of these are back, uh, this will turn on, which will also ring the bell, which tells us the game is ready to play. Jeepers, did you follow all of that? <sighs> I'm pretty chuffed. I'm pretty chuffed with it all. And I'm hungry. Uh, so that's, okay, now listen. We've done that. You might think that, yay, the, the silly old guy's finished talking about redstone. No, he has not. Because one of the things we're going to tackle today is the movement of players through the mansion. You know what? It's going to take me just a second to uh, wrap my head back around what exactly we've got to do in here. Oh, there's still got to do all the decorations and we've actually got to do a green and build the actual exterior to something. <laughs> we'll do that. Don't worry. We're getting there. This is this project is all coming together. It is so cool that this card system's done. But listen, there's somewhere that I want to take you because I've been neglecting something, which is totally not like me at all, right? <laughs> Come with me. Well, welcome back to the South Nether Tunnel where Marky has done something absolutely astonishing. The kingdom of... Markovia. Listen, if you are not watching Marky's videos, seriously, he is creating stuff that is on a whole other level and uh, it's a visual treat and he's, he's just, his nows for design is absolutely astonishing. So please go, I'm sure you are already, but if you're not, go and check out Marky Sparky's videos. He's amazing. So he's busy, <laughs> there I'll duck. He's busy creating this absolute visual treat of a, of a world for you. <clears throat> and I'm creating this. <laughs> no, I'm doing other stuff as well, but oh, we've got a hole. I need to fix that. Um, what? Okay. I need to fix that. But, yeah, the, but listen, I, I, I'm trying so hard to, to do some really technical stuff and, and the, the prettification, prettification, the prettification, the beautification. The nice stuff is um is 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 falling behind a bit, and I really need to get back to the storytelling, right? The Noon Balloon book that uh you saw me work on quite a few episodes ago now. 
I want to get back to that. And so my plan here, which has been my plan for a while, and it's now kind of really uncanny that this is here because the design aesthetic is going to be similar. Marky, you're setting the bar too high, buddy. Actually, maybe he's challenged. Maybe he's it's, he's done the right thing and set the bar high. Um, I need to turn this into a homage to the Noon Balloon book, which is going to be my theme as we keep going through this series. There are 10 main pages slash parts to the story or scenes in the story. And this is uh, 230 blocks long. So there are 23 blocks per scene uh, that I need to build into here. And I need to put a sky in. So I've just left myself a bit of a work platform there. I do need to open up one more block on each of these walls. So I think what I might do is just very quickly go and finish, uh, get clearing out the walls and I might start putting in the sky, which is just going to be a uh, light blue wool <laughs> for now. Although I've got some tricks up my sleeve I can't wait to share. And I might also just um, block out the 10 panels. And we might start looking at one or two of those today. Hi, mate. I'm wearing gold. Don't you give me a hard time. I've heard about you lot. And perfect. Um... Well, <laughs> stop looking over there, Richard. Um, mm, that was so much work. I cannot. I, I don't know. I sometimes set out to do things in this game at a scale that I've never done before. And um, they're, they're, it's huge. Hey, buddy. I've gotten rid of... Oh, are you a last vestige of... I can't do this. Hang on a second. Uh, don't get... Oh, no, you don't burn. Oh, it's going to have to be an axe to the face. Where's that dude come from? Eh, eh. Eh, eh. <laughs> hey! Leave me alone, you leave me alone, you bully! God, they make them strong these days, these children. Um, yeah, so, uh, where's that guy? Yeah, look, there's still a couple of spawning spaces left, but... Man, hoglins, I tell you, they're in cahoots with the piglins. That's not a piglin. Well, what happened? Well, herp, there we go. Okay. Uh, they're in cahoots. The hoglins get you, and then these... Disappearing people. Uh, am I hallu hallucinating? <laughs> am I? I think I'm hallucinating. Anyway, hogglers get you and the piglins steal all your stuff. I've, I've found out a few times. Uh, okay, so this is the start of, of what will be the Noon Balloon Nether Tunnel. That's not a rocket, Richard. Eh, how often does everyone do that? I probably do that about 18 times a session. Uh, there are 10 segments. I don't know why I bothered to alternate the colours on either side. That was really annoying and completely unnecessary. Ah! Oh, and I, I filled a hole. Although, the weird thing is, this is all floating. I don't... It's like some sort of maglev going through. I don't understand. What's that? Okay, I'm distracted. This is the start. This is the start, right? We've got ground and sky, but towards the end of the book of the Noon Balloon, uh, we get a sunset, and, and this is kind of my homage to the setting of the sun. Doesn't it look beautiful? Hey, I wonder if it looks any better with um, shaders on. It does not. <laughs> All right, so this is this is the start, right? There are 23... No, there are not. There are 10 segments of 23 blocks. I think we should make one of these little sections in each episode now for the next 10 episodes. There goes some content. Well done, Richard. You, you're working this thing out, mate. So the first pages. You've already seen one of the scenes, of course, because I've built that. My plan is to have each of these scenes built around uh, where my... Um, hole is. Leave it. Uh, the, so the very first one is the bedroom in the house and that's where the kids get into the uh, get into the noon balloon and head off for their adventure. Uh, it's got this beautiful purpley uh, wallpaper. There's a couple of beds and a chair and a couple of toys. So I need to find a way to kind of represent that and it's probably going to take just a little bit of experimenting. Mm, and scale wise, I might do some of these at a slightly different scale. I mean, this would be fun 
you know, like Toy Story where you're kind of small and you're looking at the... No, that's kind of mixing the stories. Let's not do that. We'll just (laughs) do it. I'll find a way to do this. Uh, Maybe when I've had a bit of a play around, we can come back and have a bit of a look and do some of this together. This is a very pixelated representation of the bedroom. It's got this lovely blue and purple wallpaper on it. Uh, but we've got the two beds. We've got a little bedside table with a lamp, a little tower thing that the kids were building, and a couple of other toys on the floor. And a couple of pictures on the wall. And, of course, joining every design... We won't talk... We won't talk about this wall. This is going to be a mirror of that, okay? That's just the way this is going to work. Uh, we're going to have the balloon. And now this is the same design um, in 2D format. Actually, it looks a bit like a skull or like a lion's face or something. Oh, that's that's quite... Oh, that's quite cool. But this is a, this is a, a, a version of the balloon that I built up in the forest scene and that will be the recurring uh, design throughout uh, the rest of the series. And, of course, the one thing I haven't done, uh, I'm going to replace this strip along here with a maybe brown, um, something to represent the floor of the bedroom, of course, and that, uh, well, you know, mm, hmm, hmm. No, I think maybe I'll shift everything down one and because this is the floor and this can be brown in the... Ro- oh, and also it should have a roof, <laughs> a ceiling. It should have a ceiling in here. Ah, oh, this is perfect. Uh, the rest of the book is outdoors, of course, until the very last scene up here, which will be as they come back indoors again. Although they never actually come inside. I think you last see them as they're landing their balloon. And uh, I'm going to do a full balloon in this space here, which will make it hard to fly in and out of when I open up that. But listen, that I think will do for now. And uh, next time you see this, I'll have the other side built up and we will do the next scene in the next episode. I like it. I think this is going to be great. All right. So movement mechanics. When you're playing the board game, uh, there's a grid on the board and rolling the dice dictates how far you can move. You can only make a suggestion of a murder. So you can only test out your hypotheses when you are in a particular room, right? So I would have to be in the study to make a suggestion in the game that is a particular player with a particular weapon in the study. And that, of course, poses a problem because you might be wanting to solve like one or two more rooms, but the dice, they're either in the wrong spot or the dice just aren't letting you get there. And uh, if you're playing with a particular house rule, that is you've got to roll an exact number to get into a room, things can get really dicey. Didn't even mean that, but cool. Good on you, Richard. Uh, So that's not going to work here because (laughs) one, two, three. No, it's not. We're not going to be doing that. What we're going to do instead is a bit of a random, it's sort of a dice roll. It's sort of a dice roll, but we're going to do this random door system. All of these doors are going to be iron doors. Perfect aesthetic for a old Victorian or Edwardian, I don't know what this is, mansion. Maybe I should look that up. That sounds like the sort of trivia that a true clue aficionado would know. 
Hmm. Anyway, uh, they're going to be iron doors. They will have pressure plates on the inside. So when you want to leave a room, that's easy. You just leave. To go into a room, you're going to have to ring the doorbell. If you ring it, there'll be it's either one or five or one in six. We're going to do a bit of play testing just to, um, to get the balance right. But there will be a chance that the door doesn't open. And if it does, you can go through and have your turn. So the rough idea of the gameplay is that you might be here in the lounge. You will announce that you're heading to make uh, a suggestion and remember we'll, we'll cover this at some point but a suggestion is different from an accusation which is when you're actually trying to announce what's in the solution box but you might uh, announce that you're heading across to the library you get to the door and you either get a yay or an a and of course there's one room that doesn't have a doorway well it's got a lot of them but they're all going to be one way things that's the hall. Uh, and so we're just going to tuck a button in the test world. I had it over here. We're going to tuck a button somewhere that is essentially just the yay or nay for the hall. It doesn't actually open a door. Let me go and get the stuff that I need and let's... Hmm. Yeah, look, I'll mention it now. The final piece de resistance of uh, this part of the system is that under the floor here... Hey, neighbours! I'm coming for you! Under the floor here... Boop! Uh-oh. Don't land in a hopper. Under the floor here is going to be a little uh, audio system that essentially gives you uh, a yes ba-ding, or a no bum -bum sound so that everyone knows if you're up here and uh, someone says, I'm going to go to the lounge, you actually get to hear the outcome of that turn. Dang it. Have I got wings on? Yes. <laughs> oh, do you reckon I can make this? Do you reckon I can make this? I can make it! Woo! Oh. Uh-oh. Wouldn't that have been great if I'd landed through there? All right, so that's uh, that's that's the rough system. Uh, we'll run just a little bit of networking of redstone underneath. <sighs> and I reckon let's build one of these. And there we have it. We've got a doorway, but I've just realised... I haven't done the decoration yet, and I don't want to have to be rolling the dice to get through the... Oh, actually, I just won't put the lid on yet. <laughs> okay, let me explain what's going on here. So, it opened. Fabulous. But I think I've got it set at the moment to four in five times. It should open, give or take, you know, randomness is fun. And there you go. Perfect. It didn't do it that time. And under here is all the goodness. So um, we're going to... It's a bit... Look, it's a little bit weird having the button down here. I'll have a sign above it. This will obviously say dining room. Here we try this. Ah, perfect. Um, so button sends... Spits one of these out. And now, this is this great little system, right? It'll spit one of these out and spit it straight back again. When we get uh, an iron shovel, it's non-stackable and going through a comparator, that will send a signal all the way along to here. When we get the piece of wool, which is the one in four times that the door won't open, roughly, uh, the signal will only come to here. So in a second, I'm going to build something underneath that's going to use those two signal strengths to work out whether or not the door opened to play the sound out in the middle. But in terms of opening the door, if the signal gets to here, there's a tiny little comparator clock. And this is this is really just to keep the door open for a couple of seconds. Uh, the signal comes through here, is inverted, and this is what is powering the iron trapdoors above. So <clears throat> when that turns off, these turn on and open the door and vice versa or something. <laughs> Hi, uh, when we push this button, every single time, this piston will fire, which is great. Um, and yes, we could actually use that to work out whether there has been a yes signal because this one won't fire. Um, but if this one does fire, then it is a yes signal, right? And so we want to stop a signal coming along here. So this will fall and uh, block, lock. I can't even, what is it? It's called jamming. Maybe. Is that the technical term? Uh, when this signal comes down here... Uh, can I... Hang on. Okay, we're going to do a demonstration. Uh, when this... Huh. Well that, oh, of course, because there's redstone dust up there. Uh, when this piston fires, it will lock... Does this... I can't even remember what that's called. 
It's called locked. Excellent. Very good. It will lock this and prevent a signal from coming through here. If this one doesn't come down, which I'm going to... Get out of there. It, there we go. That's the no signal, right? So, yeah, there's redstone dust. I didn't need both of those. Uh, so if only this one comes down, we've got the no signal. If this does come down, we have got the door opening. Look at that. I've, that's a great demonstration, Richard. Well done. All right, so let's do one more. Uh oh, let's do our one more demonstration for up here right now. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, um, door not opening. We get the negative signal. There we go. And that will be the way that we get the positive signal. Okay, listen, I need to... I want to do all the doors now because I'm in door mode. Maybe I'll keep working on the doors. We could do the decorations and I'll put in some manual door openers so I'm not getting stuck all the time. All right, it might look like a bomb's gone off in here, but I have been a busy, busy boy. And, oh, yeah, we've got, we've got some stuff done and I want to show you what's going on. I had a stream. I... Had a I had a stream where we went around and finished nearly all of the doors and I followed up afterwards and uh, and finished them all. This was where we started and we've been talking. Uh, this piston is the no signal. This is the yes. If they both fall, no signal because this guy gets locked. No signal will come along here. However, if it is a yes signal, the signal gets to this spot and will light the green path. And so, uh-oh. And so we've got uh, we've got our yes and our no circuits. And uh, give me a button. Uh, yes. Uh, if we were to send a signal through here, we get our yes signal. This is going to fall, isn't it? No, oh, it's not. And if we did the no signal, which is over here, well, this will do. If we were to put a no signal through, We've got the no. So all of the doors are now hooked up with the shuffler. And okay, at the moment, uh, we're going to have to balance this out, I think, maybe just a little bit, but uh, there is a four in five chance of a yes signal going through and a one in five of a no roll of the dice. Uh, I had that a little bit more difficult. So I think I did two in five no in the early tests uh, that we did, but I think I think this will work. I think this will be a good balance. There are times, of course, where just with the randomness, you'll get two no's in a row, and yes, that means you're essentially missing two turns in the game. But I think this is a good balance. I think on the on the on the balance of probabilities, you should only get a few no's through an entire round of the game. And that now means, of course, that we can test all of the doors. So we've got the living room in the corner here. And there you go. We've got a yes. And we've got a yes. Oh, oh hang on. You can, oh, oh, and we've got a yes. You can't do it too quickly. And we've got a yes. And we've got a yes. And we've got a yes. What's going on? Yeah, that's right. It's a yes. <laughs> oh, man. It's a yes. That's a yes. That's a yes. Oh, that's a yes. Have I done something wrong on this? What's going on? Thank you. Troopers. All right, that's a one in 87 chance of, of there being a, a no. Anyway, that's there. This is there all done. Ah, the hole I have put up in here. Yes. I don't want to do this again. No, I don't want to do this again. This one, this one actually tucks around. It's got a, a little bit. Uh, there's a couple under here that, that ended up being a little bit strange. Um, obviously, the hall doesn't need to open a door. So I'm just essentially taking its signal. Its yes signal doesn't bother with any of the door mechanics. And there are a couple where we've got to wedge them in a bit strangely. So they're over there and that's okay. It's so... <laughs> This means, this means that I think all of the redstone's done. I think all of the redstone's done. <sighs> We've got the design to do, which I'm bringing in the next episode. We will actually finish off the building. And there's one, 
part of this game we haven't spoken about once yet. I'm wondering if you know what that's going to be. You know, the people that watch my streams might know. But uh, I wonder if there's something that you've picked up that we haven't even spoken about yet. And then I think the game's going to be ready to play. Can you believe it? I've got to get out of this hole somehow. Hello? Hello? Help? Anyone? Hello? And so that is it for another week from here on Alpha Craft. Thank you all so, so, so much for being here on this journey. Uh, thank you, of course, to my amazing, amazing Patreon subscribers. You lot are incredible, and we are getting much, much closer to launching my community SMP Stagecraft, which is coming in the first weekend in July. Uh, we've got some exciting stuff planned for you there. Uh, if you're keen, uh, stagecraftsmp.com is where you need to head to find out a little bit of the details there or jump in my Discord. But folks, this is amazing. Next episode, I've got something really cool for you that I think you, you, you're going to be pretty impressed with. If you're not, could you at least act like you're impressed just to help me out a bit? Righto, gonna go. See you later, folks. Catch you soon. Goodbye.